Hey Colin, guess what I got here? The brand new C4A series strain gauge with advanced sensor technology. It's the 125 SL. All right. And today, I'd like to help you to understand how to bond this gauge properly. Have you ever bonded a gauge with the option P2, a CEA series of gauge? No. Then this is going to be identical to that. <laughs> <laughs> First thing we need to do is degrease the part. We've got this aluminum beam and Colin is going to take a uh, gauze sponge, fold it into quarters, and then he's going to degrease the surface of the beam, removing any machining oils or her fingerprints or that sort of thing. We don't want to have the contamination being ground into the part. Next step, he's going to dry a braid with the 320 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper, SCP3, or excuse me, SCP2. And he's just going to dry a braid there in the location where the gauge is going to go. 10 or 12 strokes, not critical. He's now going to take some conditioner A, <clears throat> the mild phosphoric acid solution, and another piece of the uh, 320 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper, and he's going to wet a braid with the conditioner A. He'll take a clean dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters, and with a single wiping motion absorb the excess contaminated conditioner A off the beam. Next step will be to take the uh, conditioner A and the 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper. We're getting to that surface finish of normally about 60 RMS for an aluminum beam and general purpose stress analysis work. So with the 400 grit, the SCP3 paper, he's going to flood the surface with the conditioner A and then wet a braid, 10 or 12 strokes. It's not critical, just enough to get the nice uniform, nominally 60 to 120 RMS surface finish. We're shooting for around 60. And as we did before, he's going to take a clean dry gauze sponge and absorb the excess contaminated material off of his beam. He's now going to take a cotton tip applicator and scrub with the conditioner A. We've abraded the material, abraded away the oxidization, and now we want to scrub and get away any of the uh, ground-in contaminants, anything that might be on surface contamination. And you notice his cotton tip applicator is turning a little dark. That says it's etching the material. The mild phosphoric acid solution is doing its job. Having completed that uh, scrub with conditioner A again, with a single wiping motion, he's going to absorb the excess material. And the final step of surface preparation will be to use the Neutralizer 5A. Now, we would have burnished an alignment mark here, but this is a demonstration, so we're just going to put the gauge down. Again, Neutralizer 5A, the white tip bottle, and he's going to scrub it. This is going to bring the pH to nominally either a neutral or slightly basic and there's a little bit of mild detergent in it to help wet it to the surface. Last step in the surface preparation will be to dry up or to remove that excess material with a tr clean dry gauze sponge, a single wiping motion. All right, we can set our beam out of harm's way. It's prepared, and we got about 15 to about an hour's worth of time before it begins to oxidize enough where we'd have to redo the surface preparation. He's going to take a clean glass plate, and by the way, that's now a product. We, can, we sell the GP2 clear glass plates. If you don't have one in your facility, glass plates make an excellent staging area for your gauge that's unbonded. It's easy to clean, and it's easy to identify if it's dirty. Having done that, he's now going to remove the gauge from its packaging. And remember how we had to remove, pull that wire back a little further? I'm going to have to unclip the wire. If not, the, the, the gauge is um, a little bit too close to the, the wire system. He'll put back on that just to keep it from flailing out into the middle of everywhere. 
now he's going to, with the bonding surface down, there's a shiny side and a dull side. If you look at the back side, it's dull and the shiny side is up. He's going to take some of the PCT 3M tape. Going to throw away the first piece because it might be contaminated. He'll pull off another piece and he's going to stretch it between his thumb and forefinger to take the wrinkles out and to keep it from curling too much. And put two handles on either end of the tape. Now because the gauge is, is uh, a C2A or has a similar to a C2A construction, the tape is put on a, almost the same way as we did before with any other standard CEA series gauge. Now he needs to remove the gauge handling tape from the glass plate at a shallow angle until he's beyond the gauge. He'll now transfer that over to the part. He'll tack the gauge into position. And then again lifting at a shallow angle, he'll expose the bonding surface of that gauge. Lifting at a shallow angle until he's past the gauge. Exposing the bonding surface. Exposing the bonding surface. And then he's going to use the Catalyst C. He'll hit the brush on the inside of the neck of the bottle at least eight to ten times, removing almost all of the material. And with a squeegee motion, he'll just squeegee it across the gauge, wetting that surface with the uh, Catalyst C. And then we wait one minute of air dry time. We've now finished our one minute of air dry time for the Catalyst C and Colin has the Embon 200 adhesive. He's going to take the cap off. He has a gauze sponge folded and ready at the quarters. And going to put a single drop of adhesive there at the cusp of the tape and the gauge. He'll pull it taut and then squeegee right through and then follow with his thumb or in this case his forefinger. It's a little more convenient. And he'll hold it for one minute of thumb pressure or finger pressure in this case. Okay, Colin is at the end of his one minute of thumb pressure or finger pressure and now we'll wait for two minutes under the tape. 